let's think about a case in school. So Josh is 14. He's never gotten into trouble at school before. You're working at the school and find out he's gotten into a fight with another boy. You ask him what the fight was about, and he says the boy was making fun of him because of his shoes. Things have been more tough at home since his father lost his job a few months ago. His family has not had as much money to buy new clothes or shoes. He feels like every little thing his mom or little brother talked to him about irritates him. And friends he used to hang out with are getting sick of his attitude. He thinks he just has an anger problem. But does he just have an anger problem? So one thing that's different in teens it, versus adults is that to diagnose depression, your mood can be depressed, sad, or it can be irritable. So being irritable in teens and being kind of argumentative with everyone, especially in boys, sometimes it shows up as kind of conflict fights and things like that. But if you ask kind of deeper questions, you could get at, are they actually feeling depressed and sad and having other symptoms of depression, which include that they used to be interested in things they're not interested in anymore. But that happens a lot in teens. You know, they're trying out different things. One key thing is, are they now interested in something else? So maybe they used to play lacrosse and now they're playing guitar all the time. That's fine. It's okay for them not to like playing lacrosse anymore. But if they have completely lost interest in things that they actually genuinely used to like before and have not found anything else, then that is a worrisome sign. So it's normal for teens to not wanna to talk to their parents anymore. But if they also don't want to talk to any friends anymore and are isolating, that's a problem. Are they feeling worthless, hopeless, guilty? Sometimes guilt is the reason why teens won't share how they're feeling. So you might feel like, man, they want to just be so private and closed off. But sometimes they're seeing the pain that we're going through as adults and feeling like I don't wanna put more of my burden. It's my fault, I can't handle my own, my own problems, my own self, I'm supposed to be growing up into this adult, so I'm just gonna deal with it on my own. We hear that a lot. And so letting people know, hey, even as adults, we don't deal with things on our own. Our car breaks down, we find someone to fix it. We, you know, I had a mouse in my shed and my husband took it out, <laughs> I didn't have to do it. We don't do everything by ourselves. But young people have this belief, and I think partly because of our society, that you know, they need to figure this out on their own. And that's, that can be harmful if they think that, because it might stop them from getting help. And then in their thinking, they can have trouble concentrating. So you might have somebody who you're wondering, do they have a learning issue? And it might actually be depression. If they have trouble making decisions, have suicidal thoughts. And then in terms of their body, they might feel tired, have no energy. Again, that's a common thing to see in teens, um, but is it, does it make sense for how much they're sleeping? So are they sleeping all the time and they're still tired? Also appetite, eating too much or too little. And one thing that I like to point out is, this is if you do a Google image search of teen depression, just on my computer, maybe it has an algorithm for me. But you see all these pictures, it's like obvious in the picture, oh, okay, this person was covering up their cutting. This person has their head in their hands. But in reality, depression, you can't see it. You don't see some kid in the school hallway sitting with their head in their hands um, outside of their locker. This depression can happen to everyone. Some days are good, some days are bad and you can't just see it from the outside. So this head in the hands thing, it's, some, it's not helpful to think about depression that way. 